Welcome to Podcast 325 of Five Star Potential, your weekly football manager podcast. I'm Duke, and on this week's pod, I'm joined by Joe, aka Friday Night FM, Paul, aka Mad FM, and Dave, aka the Blue Lagoon Enthusiast. How are we doing, gentlemen? <laughs> Very I well. Bl- I don't think I've had a Blue Lagoon in about five years. Context. Context Do you know what that means, right? That means we need to get together and have some Blue Lagoons, which is really easy for me to say, so we should have some. What does it taste I remember like? That, I remember the days, mate. Weatherspoons. Here's my Weatherspoons table number. Oh. People keep people begging me to do that every night. I'm like, nah, mate. We're not we're not 18 anymore. Come on. So, I think we should 19, do it. 19, like... 19 and three quarters. <laughs> it's it's like Matt, do you got one near you? Of lemonade, really. It's lemonade. It's just lemonade. That's what you like. Yeah. You got any you got uh, Weatherspoons near you, Matt? When we come down and do our little five star pod outing, can we get one? I actually saw a headline at the weekend that says spoons are pulling Just out. Yes or no, really, would have done. But okay, uh, gentlemen, this <laughs> podcast <closing> release, <laughs> this podcast drops on Monday, the 6th of November, or as we call it in this business, full release day. Joe and Matt can now start their saves with Familiar Cow and AIK. Dave and I can continue playing saves with the clubs we support because we're 10 year old virgins. <laughs> but we move on. On this week's pod, we'll be talking about squad depth. But not maybe as you know it. And we'll be popping to France for our venture in Wonderkid land. And I've heard a little rumour. I don't know why, but Dave is on quiz duty again. But before that, well, let's have your winners of the week, boys. Joe, who's your winner? Well, seeing as Dave's only just learned about Rooney Bargy, um, and it's <sighs> another player that I've been recommending around, Alexander Aravena. Um, I posted a screenshot, I think, of... I don't know, maybe a tactic or something like that. I've had a few people saying, oh, oh, yeah, he looks really good. I've had him. I recommend him to Dave. I've had him at Monaco. I've got him at West Ham. So, there you go. Little bargain wonder kid for you. Perfect. Okay. He looks good. I mean, I've got him as well. He looks a beast. See? Chili. He's from Chile. Love that. It's cold. It's cold. (laughs) That's two weeks in a row. (laughs) Okay, Dave, save us. Who's your winner of the week, my mate? <laughs> um, probably, well, me. I've played lots of football manager. Um, like over the last, well, last weekend, I was playing. I was like, oh, I'll do a little stream, a few hours. I did two five hour streams, I think, over the weekend, just sat there playing football manager, Big eating time. loads of grillets, which, you know, uh, just speaks for itself. So, yeah, it was a good week, really. Uh, he conquered all the grillets. Yeah, He's never going to stop. Legally say that there are other. Fast food takeaways out there available, right? We're not Happy actually done. sponsored. It's, it's a bit like no. it's a bit like Nando's for people. They're not. They're it, not right? our affiliate club. No, no they're not. <laughs> what is it like a budget Nando's? Isn't there a midfielder called Grill Grillish? Grillish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Close enough. Grillish. Is it, um, yeah. sign, him, sign him up, Dave. Wolfsburg, isn't it? Come is it Wolfsburg? Dave, what do you have? See, what people I want mean, to know. It's a bit of a weird because you have the weird. worst takeaway sometimes. Uh, from there, you can have a chicken wrap, but it's almost like in a either like a really thick pita bread. But then it's like Nando's chicken in there. You can pick the herb, but obviously salad, um, mayo, and then obviously you get peri fries. Or there's loads of different sides. But I, I like a pizza from there as well. To be fair, to be yeah. fair, looking at your your past lovers, mate, I'm not surprised you got a horrible taste in food. Uh, Mad, <laughs> who's wow. your winner of the week, my mate? Dupe. Moving on. Okay, winner so my winner. <laughs> <laughs> I have three. I have three winners of the week, Dupe, but all of them happened okay. yesterday evening between the hours of eight fifteen and ten p.m. while you were watching it live. So yeah, I maybe, maybe I should hand it to you. Plastic. Plastic. Plastic see you there, mate. Yeah. Sorry, Dupe. Sorry. Yeah, you, uh, you gave okay. the ticket. To, you gave I the mean... ticket to your kids, instead of me. I thought you. I thought. I thought we had something. Here. Mate, if you had turned up there, he'd have to be doing the roof at Old Trafford. <laughs> I'll tell you, someone needs to do it. Uh, yeah, no, I just gotta. I have to go Newcastle, obviously. Uh, like that was a serious win. I know United weren't great, do Man United weren't were very poor. Let's say it, they were shite. Um, but I think we're going to talk about squad depth. That was a great example of squad depth. Like we had six fullbacks start that match. So, <laughs> however it worked, it worked. Um, the one thing I do want to shout out though is Tino Livermento, and I, it's something I've been thinking about in FM. A couple of weeks ago, I was looking at him in game uh, when the beta dropped, and I was like, "Ooh, maybe I could do a little save and turn Tino Livramento into a bit of a Gareth Bale." 
and let's say retrain him up as a as a basically a right sided kind of like an inside forward maybe. I think he's got the athleticism, he's got the attributes, the speed. Um, so it's something on my mind, but I thought beta wouldn't be long enough to get it done. So something for the future maybe, but we could be headed there. He um, he definitely was playing a bit higher at the pitch. He looked more like an inverted winger, which sounds a bit weird. Like his starting position was so much higher than like a fullback. Um, but he mm. was on his favoured side, yet still cutting in and very, uh, very mm. good. Yeah, very good player. Um, uh, yeah, Serious. we'll get on to what my thoughts are. Very shortly, but my uh, my win of the week. Uh, well, I don't, I don't. Without sounding too bad, I mean, there's anything to be happy about as a United fan. Three 0 to City, three 0 to to Newcastle. I mean, it, congratulations, Newcastle. You won your cup final. Um, I have to say, actually, I'll be honest with you, uh, and I'll say away fans, uh, Newcastle away fans were awesome. Um, it was good banter. There was good crack. Uh, I mean, it's easy when you're 3-0 up. But they were good. Uh, and the atmosphere was uh, was very, very nice. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest and I'll say that I'd love to hear a little bit more fan reaction in-game. Uh, you know, like you people have the sounds on. I'd love to be able to hear a little bit more licensed stuff, which I know is difficult. But hear some of the, the songs that we know and love. <clears throat> did, did last night cement Oscar's support for Newcastle United? <laughs> no, no, I got a picture with Fred the Red uh, for viewers on YouTube. There you go. Uh, we were, we had some really good seats, to be fair. Uh, we were um, just behind our disabled section. So like we had like a little ledge and he was kind of rested up there watching. Uh, he does like, he bought a half and half scarf, which uh, it infuriates <laughs> me. But he, you know, he, he likes it Newcastle. With your Sorry? <laughs> he bought it with your money. Yeah, I had, well, I had to buy a half and half scarf to give him, which hurt me. Um, but now he come away. He gave me a bit of shit in the car. I, I have to admit, you know, he, and he was saying us when he was talking about Newcastle. Uh, and then I took a oh. mate of mine who I do coaching with, and he's a Newcastle fan, and he's a like he's born in South Shields, so he's a bit of a Geordie as well. And um, as soon as he got out of the car, and we dropped him off. Oscar just kind of went, "Don't worry, Daddy. I was just doing that for show. I'm a new, I'm a Manchester United fan, really." So, yeah, he's closet, a fan. closet, and you know what, fan. We've all been there. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's one of them, isn't it? Uh, Joe, losers of the week. My losers. losers of the week are the bell sniffs that booed Declan Rice oh, against Arsenal. Don't get this. Don't get it, mate. Absolutely, don't get it. Um, but it kind of reminded me a bit of FM players that don't celebrate against their old club. You know, it actually comes up as text in the game, doesn't it? Mate, yeah. celebrate. You know, just don't be a dick. Added by your Added by your Yeah, no, yeah. But, that's, but that's so iconic, though, isn't it? I don't even think that's being a dick. He was getting slated that whole game. He was. He's just giving yeah. give it a big one. But I, I'd love to see that in FM. Like, he's over-celebrating, or he literally runs down the other end to celebrate. That'd be sick, wouldn't it? It would be good. And Feature request. Sure did- did they boom when he came on, or was it when he retouched the ball, or was it just a whole lot? Bit of everything, mate. Even when he was warming up, there, there was like, and it was handfuls. Like it wasn't everyone. Okay. Most of the the fan base were kind of applauding him, cheering him, but there was just a few dicks. Was it like Nunes against Wolves, huh? No, mate, because he actually I meant can't. something to the club. Hey, <laughs> he gave a shit. Boones, I mean, you he, mean? What is it? He had one year left on his contract. You got hundred million for him, like one one a European Cup, yeah, one a European Cup. What, what more? more you know, you've got to look at it when you look at like Bobby Moore, Billy Bonds, Trevor Brookin, like those kind of players. Like he's of that stature in terms of what he achieved at the club. Came through the academy, you know, monumental transfer fee, and delivered silverware. Why are you booing him? Did they used to boo Frank Lampard? Yes, as well. Yeah, they probably still different. do, mate. Oh. Yeah. It's different, though. No, different. I, that was, it. and it was I, a different era for the club. Yeah, yeah, I'll be completely honest, though. Like, as long as a player goes on to bigger, better things, I can't, I can't fault them. Like, if they're improving, like their stature, <clears> I can't fault it, unless it's like a direct rival. Mm. The, the people um, that but, are butt fucked about it, mate, because it was looked like it was going to be City, and they were like, "Yeah, he's going to go to City. That's understandable. They've won the treble. He'll he'll play. You know, when Rodri doesn't play, da 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 da." And then he moved to Arsenal, who haven't won anything, obviously, for a while. But come on, the stature of the clubs is different. Um, West Ham are closing the gap, I would say, slowly. But it's still, Arsenal is still a bigger club. And I think because it's that London rivalry type of yeah. thing, 
I, I don't get it, but I can kind of see. I think everyone thought he was going to go to City, and it didn't happen. And he's literally moved across London. It is what it is. Mm. Mm. No one really wants to live in Manchester, though. So I can't, I can't follow him for one to live in the big city. Uh, David, your winner of the week, or loser of the week, sorry. I'm going to go VAR for this one. I'm not saying what Joe said. On that. Absolutely <laughs> backed out of the script here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going with VAR. Um, obviously, at the time of recording, our last league, Wolves' last league game was uh, against Newcastle. And um, me and Mad were sort of having a conversation throughout the game. And then the penalty came up. And sort of I was right behind it at the time. And I thought, yeah, I can understand why the referee's given it. But, you know, on second view, and it should never have been given. And the whole mm. job of VAR is to sort of iron out these errors. So, could have been a completely different game. We had a little bit of momentum. It was 1-1. Who knows? But, I mean, it was still a positive result for Wolves in the end. But it's just getting a bit boring now. I mean, not just Wolves, but most clubs in the... It's, in the it's dog league. shit, mate. It's dog yeah. shit. Just get rid of it. I'll be honest, we do talk about VAR quite a lot. Um, but for me, it's quite refreshing. Um, being in the ground, uh, top-level sport, kind of top-level sport from one team anyway. And no VAR, no VAR in the Carabao Cup oh, the uh, until, the, yeah. until the semi-finals. Um, goal went in, pure relief. You know, they you, you check the liner, no flag, cheer away. You know what I mean? And it was none of that having to worry about hearing that woman's voice. VAR check in uh, in progress. It's just so frustrating. Yeah. So that was nice. I think it's safe for the players as well. Like, because uh, I've heard Callum Wilson talk about it on his podcast. Like, they're now scoring and just, you know, they're... The, the natural euphoria of scoring just isn't really there anymore because there's always that hesitation or the having a look. Or, and I think even last night, it was just back, goals bagging in, proper celebrations, crowd probably added to it as well. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think like... Um, I, I watched that game last night. It was better without it. I think the, the, the game is about scoring goals. I mean, at the end of the day, everything you do is setting up to, to score goals or to stop goals. So, you know, we want to see goals. We really do. Hmm. It's, it's shocking. Uh, Mad. I mean, loser of the week. You want to talk about your injuries at, at Newcastle because you had two more last night. <laughs> I was I was going to um, because it, it start. You remember, do what, what one minute and twenty seconds in Matt Target has done his. Was it start. a bad tackle? It looked really bad. No, from where I just, sat. and again, he just he just stretched for the ball. It was no challenge. It wasn't uh, because of the challenge. He just did his happy when okay. he was um, stretching for the ball. I, I mean, it is. Sick as well, it has been on my mind. In, injuries in FM have, have been popping around a little bit as well on, on social media. I think uh, a little bit about goalkeeper injuries as well. And we've all kind of seen that. Um, I just hope that because th there's this couple of screenies going around of Newcastle's injury list plus Sandro Tonali, but we don't talk about that again. And I just hope that SI aren't looking at it and going, well, it happens because <laughs> I, I think I, I find it a hard thing to navigate in game because injuries come in a wave like that. And I think Newcastle are obviously very unlucky now, but I feel like, yeah, if that's an FM, it, it, it could piss us off a lot when we get to February, March and we don't need more, any more than it already is. So yeah, injuries definitely for me. Um, the other loser of the week is uh, Dave's goalkeeper, Jose Sa, because he's made a right dog <laughs> dinner of that fucking ball. That he and the penalty to be fair, he didn't really get his body beyond it, did he? But yeah. Nah. Well, my loser of the week, is pretty easy. It's Dave. Um, just so you all know, Dave's not watched his knob for a week, so he's not a <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, no, that's that was what was in the script for Dave's lose of the week. So I thought I'd have that in there. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, somebody that's that spent a fortune taking taking my kid up to watch Man United, and just my the time it's taken for me to do it, and the effort is taken, and I genuinely put more effort in than those boys did. Um, I don't care about a result. Result to me doesn't I never worry about a result as long as, it, as people are given a fucking good account for themselves. Uh, and that was shocking, absolutely shocking from what I witnessed. Um, I, I yeah, I, I can't even try to make it into uh, to FM terms tonight because genuinely pissed off about how bad they played. Yeah, you can. That was what I've got my hand up for. Okay, there you I was go. Say, I how, what would you do in FM? And it was going to be you're going to play a save with them. I, yeah, I saw your tweet. That's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, we talk about it quite a lot. And I think we've probably all done very similar tweets where we've witnessed something. I know, Joe, we've talked about it before where you've kind of 
I've jumped in Discord and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just I'm playing as such and such because I watched them play yesterday and I think that I'd like to see. I I literally driving home. It was pouring in the rain. It took us three and a bit hours to get home because of traffic on the on the M6. And I'm sat there going, so how would I change it? How what would I do against Fulham on Saturday? How would I make a difference? And I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't think I could. <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, and there was a few bright, bright sparks, one of them being Hannibal. Yes, he picked up in a yellow card early on and that kind of did hamper the way he could play. But for me, I would just stick the youth boys in and I'd get some of those boys hooked and uh, like regular on. I, I don't know if, you, if the TV cameras picked it up, but he was on our side, second half. And like I said, I am like two rows from the front, three rows from the front so I can see everything. And he's like, it's almost like he's fake acting about crying because he gave the ball away for the third goal it looks like he's slamming his fist into the floor and, and it's oh, like yeah. just fucking stop doing that and actually turn around and change what you can change and change the way that you're passing the ball change the way you're trying to attack and make a difference don't go oh look fans love me because i'm crying my eyes out fuck off back to tottenham you prick anyway so yeah i'm gonna do a save basically <laughs> joe and i'm gonna send him straight back first job um and play the youngsters uh, and uh, rip this club up because there needs to be a sporting director in place. I can't believe we haven't got a sporting director in place. We seem to go around in circles and circles and circles. Ralph Rannick came in as a temporary manager, an interim manager. He basically told the truth about how he saw the club. They didn't want to hear it. They got rid of him and they should have put him upstairs because he had some clear thoughts about how he wanted to, the club to go forward. And that's what we needed. And we just go around the circle. They'll, they'll sack Ten Hag by the end of the season. The, the players will get a free run to the end of the season, which they'll love because they can't be fucking arsed. They can't be bothered. And then it will be new manager in, more money spent, and back to square Spot one again. Me. They'll pick yeah. up with a few results, get to end of the second season, and we'll, we'll be in exactly the same position again. Do, do you think ten like there's a lot of talk about Ten Hag and I I was tempted to throw Ten Hag in here as loser of the week and you might you might have seen it there's one or two clips of him at that game and it doesn't make for good watching like there's at one point when a goal goes in he just kind of throws his hands up in the air he's like like I've but no idea what's happening mistake. here which doesn't look great that, you know you talked yeah. about how good Livermento was Livermento's won past four players yeah it's crazy isn't it. Look, why are they not just bringing him down like he's moving into mm. an advanced position dangerous we're short on numbers at the back. Not not doing it. The third goal, okay, it, we are 2-0 down at the stage. But why is no one closing Willock down? Why are they giving him so much space on the edge of the area? And then the... Um, madness. And then, I mean, the Lewis Hall goal, uh, From again, we were right behind the angle and it, you just can't see it. It just bubbles through players and, and it goes in. But shit, still shit defending. No one going out to him. No one trying to get the block in. And then we play nothing going forwards. Uh, like They brought Hoyland on and... He hasn't t touched the ball. We're not crossing balls in. We're not doing anything. It's so frustrating. So Did you double up the DMs, like double up the DMs with Casemiro and Amrabat? Because I don't think they've played mate, together yet, have they? Have I fucking other? played 12 at the back, to be honest, mate, and just try and stop. <laughs> I would literally just, I, I genuinely, if it was me right now, I would genuinely just get a flat back four. I would try and just not concede against Fulham, which sounds ridiculous. But, if I come away with a nil-nil draw against Fulham, I'm happy. If you can get a sneak a one-nil win, I'm happy. You need to just shut the shot. We cannot keep conceding goals the way that we're conceding goals. We are allowing people far too much time with the ball in, in our box, far too much time with the ball on the edge of our box. And there's just so much that needs to be... It, it just needs to be ripped up. Genuinely. I, okay, granted, we haven't got our back four. It's not our back four. He does prefer Wemba Saka over Dallo. So we didn't start a single one of our back four. But then when our back four is in there, they're not the best. Duran looks like he constantly needs a shit when he runs. I, I cannot believe he's like the way that he runs. It just it, that winds me up. But oh, it's just it just needs to be like. And I'll be doing I'll be doing a save on him. But you know, do it. Just frustrates do it. Me. It just frustrates me. I have genuinely been angry all day, all day about it. Um, so well, yeah, that's well, that's me today. So. We've got Gary Neville on the pod today, haven't we? <laughs> no, hang on, I got to play the fucking Glazers as well. Um, vote, vote Labour. Um, <laughs> should we move on and do some save updates? Because uh, you need I, to get I, his little fucking there. vagina bit in the middle of his forehead as well. <laughs> to be fair, if it was there, David probably want to fuck it. Right, Matt and Joe are waiting to get going, but we've all played a bit of FM this week. So how's it been going, Dave? We'll start with you. Who's your top left? How have you been getting yeah. on at FM, mate? Um. I think when we were talking last week, it was just before 
had the EFL Cup final uh, against United. So we'd actually, we went and won that. We beat Man United 3-1, uh, which I really Everyone wasn't expecting. United, mate. <laughs> yeah. But they'd beaten me, obviously, in the league a couple of months before, 7-1. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a long game. And, and, yeah, we did beat them. But we were on a really strong run of form. And then, to be fair, between then and the end of the season, we had mixed form. The only games we dropped points in, really, were against big teams, United, Liverpool, City. West Ham. Got... <laughs> we beat West Ham, just about. Um, and the last month of the season, really, we, it was in our own hands whether we were going to get top four or not. So we played Luton. Uh, we were drawing one-one, and I've got this. I've got Costinha, the right wing back, and there's a curse with him at the moment. So he's got good penalty taking. Um, he missed a penalty. I think in the game we lost three-two to Liverpool. I, he, he had a penalty to put us three-one up uh, right at the death. He missed it, and Liverpool scored two late goals to win the game three-two against Luton at one-one. Towards the end of the game, he had a penalty and missed it. So obviously we dropped two points. Um, and then we go to the final game of the season and I just needed a point uh, against Arsenal and, and Villa to drop points and we would have got top four. But Arsenal smashed us 4-1. Um, Villa, in the end, uh, won their game. So we finished fifth in the league, which, you know what, I was disappointed. But I thought, for, you know what, for a, a first season, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And then with the coefficients, England uh, got given an extra Euro Champions League play. So I finished fifth, but still qualified for the Champions League. So obviously that was good ahead of the, the new season. And I've just started season two. I had a bit of a crazy transfer window. Um, there were a lot of players coming back, like Gonzalo Guedes, who still plays the Wolves, Daniel Pedence. But for what, and I thought, you know what, we could get a bit of money in here. But for whatever reason, I really, really struggled to sell them. Um, so in terms of transfers, I had a really busy window. I spent £124 million overall. Received ninety-five million pounds. So the biggest transfers, I signed a guy called Usman Diamande, big centre half from Sporting. Looks like a really good player. Uh, still quite young. He's only twenty years old. Andre from uh, Fluminense in Brazil looks really good as a DM. Um, another DM I got, which I'm quite excited to use, is Federico Redondo. Um, I think I'm sure we had some off-camera chats about him before, and I think he came up on some of the scout football stuff uh, before. And he was out, actually going to be out of contract. Um, in, in six months, uh, because I think the Argentina season runs a, a bit differently, doesn't it? So I offered him a contract, he accepted it, and then I did that thing where you can sign him now. So I signed him for just two million pounds, and he looks really, really good. Um, um, yeah, and then some other players, Rooney Bargy is one who I know Joe has, yeah. has said he'd used it before, but been using him as like a number 10, and he looks he looks ridiculous. He's still only 18. I signed him for less than 10 million pounds. And I genuinely think in a couple of seasons, I mean, he's valued at seven between 70 and hundred million already. We're only three games into the season. Um, yeah, and another guy, Emmanuel Omega, 21 year old striker from Strasbourg, six foot five, <laughs> bit of a beast up front as well. Looks so, a beast, doesn't he? The only issue is I'm a bit cautious about playing him because his agent was playing a bit hard to get. And once he, he's on 43 grand a week at the moment, and after 25 league games, he goes up to 100 grand a week. <laughs> so Honestly, moment, mate, if you've ever watched Dave's streams, he's the worst negotiator ever. Yeah. <laughs> he's terrible. Right. He's going to get on so, uh, a big deal in a minute so that you can see how bad he is there. Yeah. And then in terms of sales, I mean, Nelson Samedo was refusing to sign a new contract. So I ended up selling him to uh, United for 25 million. Johnny, who's already on his way out, has gone for 20, 12 million. Mario Lamina, who's a good player, I sold for 10 million. But I sort of with that money, obviously, I was able to get Redondo and plus 8 million, you know, in, in profit as well. So, and a couple of the players kicking off at me for certain situations. So, um, anyone that moaned at me, I just sold during the window as well. I was like, yeah, you know, you, you could do one. But yeah, the, the transfer Duke was talking about was um, I was just looking at players that were interested in joining us. And there were some players. Tony Cruz was transfer listed, but frustratingly didn't really fit into the way we played and probably obviously physically not there. But the top of the list was Lionel Messi. And I thought, surely not. Surely not. He's on, what, 350 grand a week or whatever it was at uh, Inter Miami. So I just thought, you know, I'll chuck 10 million at him because it says not for sale. I'll chuck 10 million at him. Let's see. Chuck 10 million at him. Accepted it straight away. I was like, oh, right, okay. And this was probably with about two to three weeks left of the window at first. So tried to sort of negotiate and offer him something. He, he wanted oh, he wanted similar sort of money, 350K, which would have just broken all my financial and wage structure. Um, and I tried and tried. And the agent had very little patience. So only after about two or three attempts, it was over. I was like, right, okay, well, we'll go towards deadline day and try again. So I'd signed all these players. My squad was where I wanted it to be. I was happy. 
Um, and then I got into talks. With, I, I sort of bigged him up, got scouts watching him. And then I, I went back in for Messi on deadline day, accepted the deal. Um, and then looked at the, tra- the wages again and just about brokered the deal, added all the bonuses and clauses that you could think of. Um, but then the issue was I hadn't, I hadn't got enough money in the bank to broker the deal. So basically I needed from the start of deadline day to the end of deadline day, I needed to make 10 million quid and I would have signed Lionel Messi. And do you think I could sell anybody? These players, Guedes, who's worth about 40 million, I was trying to flog for 10 million. Sarabia, Pedence, none of them would go. So in the end, it might be a blessing in disguise because the squad I've got now is, is still great. Um, but yeah, we could have signed uh, Lionel Messi. This is like when you used to try and sign Ronaldo all the time, Dave. Remember that? Never happened. Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that he's like, I sent my scouts to watch Messi. Imagine going to your scouts and be like, uh, "Let me know if Phil he's Cannon, good there. mate." When you see <laughs> Phil Cannon watching the, watching your top target, you know you mean business. So I'll be honest, it was a very interesting watch, Dave. You you chucked everything out that you wanted that to work so much. Like at one point, I thought you were going to offer yourself out for sale because you were just so <laughs> desperate. Well. Every man and his dog was offered out, wasn't they? Yeah. Mate, no, I, everybody I, I, in his stream as well. Yeah. Use intermediaries. Use the transfer room. Like and those, are, I have nobody's yeah, interested. It was like, have you not had any any offers from Saudi Arabia? It's like genuinely, like I've had players sold Saudi Arabia, but it's all my fringe players. I've not been able to sell any sort of big hitters at the moment. So Mate, I've there's got only one thing like, with Saudi Arabia, and they Newcastle. Yeah, they've right. signed everyone you've gone for. Yeah, that that is yeah. true. As well. everyone that seemed to look at a lot of Brazilians, Newcastle seemed to go for them. But so now I've got Guedes, who's there, unhappy, obviously because I tried to sort tout touting him out. Pedence isn't even registered. I couldn't register him. Um, so yeah, the squad the squad is strong, but at the moment I feel it's a bit too heavy. But I think once the Champions League starts, I'll uh, I'll be a lot more satisfied. But. I've only just started the season, but we kicked off with, I've got City away. I was like, oh my God, we've beaten 3 now. It's like an unbelievable. So I think all three were absolute bangers as well. So we got off to a really good start. Dave, you mentioned you signed Rooney Bargy and you signed Usman Diamande. I was going to say, those two are on the list that Football Manager tweeted out uh, for the top 10 most signed players. Did you see that, lads? Oh, uh, really? I believe- yeah, so Rooney Bargy is number four, Diamande is number eight, and Valentin Barco is number one, that left back. We won't then. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, interesting list with a few names on it, but your buddy's on it as well, Dupe. Victor. Victor Osterman. Number uh, six. Do you know I had um, Valentin Barco at Stoke last year? Yeah, I was going to say, you did that. speak about him, didn't you? Mm-hmm. He's been Not around. So yeah, there's one or two names that I like. Patrick Dorigo. I don't know who he is. It looks like he's. Oh, mate, he's. Yeah. I've not heard of him. I haven't come no, he, him. His attributes not great at the start, but he does flourish. Interesting. But I, I prefer the guy from Fiorentina. Um, Coyote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coyote, yeah. Coyote, That's yeah. Right. He looks good. And there's, I mean, I mean, I could I could go on for ages. Mm. As you are. I, I love, I love looking for, I love looking for players in FM. I was going to say, why don't you tell us about who you found at Monaco, Joe? I.e. tell well, us your save update. Do you know what? I stopped playing as Monaco. I, I got oh. up past the January window and I thought, I don't want to continue it in case I kind of fall in love with it. So, yeah, started a West Ham save. First piece of business was selling Antonio to the Saudis. See you later, budget at Dharma. Um, <laughs> and the reason why I started this West Ham save, I fancy playing a bit an asymmetric tactic now I don't like them um, never have done always feel they're a bit dirty I like a bit of symmetry in my life and I thought now's the time in early access to give it a go so four at the back nice and symmetrical uh, but then in the midfield I've got on the left hand side Valente on attack Lucas Pacata. Um then Alvarez as a DM and then James Wall prowse as a CM on support and then on the right wing, as I would call it, is Jared Bowen, and I'm, I'm playing him as a winger. And then I've got a shadow striker playing in the left, kind of left attacking midfielder spot um, as Mohamed Kudus. And then obviously a forward up front in, in the forward right position. Uh, and that is um, Aravina at the moment. Um, and it was basically, to, I was trying to give um, Paqueta the space basically have all of that left-hand side 
just ha- having no one in his way to just run up and down. Because when you actually watch him in game, he isn't like an attacking midfielder. He's not a he is everywhere. Like he'll do a job defending, attacking. He'll, he just wants to get involved. So I was just playing to see what that is. And what it turned into, I went for kind of like the, the fluid counter attack because I feel that's a like what, how West Ham play a lot. They soak up pressure and then they drill teams on the on the counter attack. So that's what I went with. And at first I thought I'll use that as as a kind of away tactic to start with. Just and mate, I've I've ended up playing probably about ten games and it's I'm playing against everybody like it. And other than losing to Chelsea, it's literally I've won every game. It's defensively solid. It's I think where it it, it creates overloads with how it I mean it, it pretty much is a four three three. But when you watch it in game and I use the opposition um kind of heat map on the tactic screen quite a lot just to see where the players are and then I'm making I'm making moves in game. So like if I'm seeing their midfielders with a lot of space, then I'll move like James Will Prowse around predominantly. If it's looking like um Jared Bowen has got space, I'm like pushing him further forward, equally with the shadow striker. Like if I think he's getting a bit lost or he's getting it's a bit congested, I'm move I'm like moving him. Because I, I found like second half of games the momentum swing can be massive. So I've kind of I'm, I'm making changes on what I'm seeing rather than just the plug and play tactic at the moment. Is like Kudos good in game, Joe? Because I always when I've looked at him before. It just seemed like one of those players from an FM perspective that because there's not a specific position, he's, he's got about it's hard to find where he he's got about seven natural positions. Yeah, and it, he he has been good. Like he pop, he's had goals, assists. Like you see him, yeah. loads of energy. Like he seems to just want to run everywhere. Like high work rate. Uh, yeah, but we'll see. I say it's only kind of probably ten games I've played, so it's not. There's no hard and fast. Me going. This is. This is working. I don't know. Is it OP? I don't think so. But it is. It's getting some good results. But it is like the tactic is working rather than it being like we're not scoring loads of goals. It's it's one nils, two nils. You know, and so other than Chelsea, who beat us three nil, that's I, I don't think I've lost to another team, and that's in Europe as well. So is the plan come Monday or come today as the pod released it? I'll fuck that right off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you take the system with you, or you got a different? No. I mean, we'll hear more about that next week, I'm sure. But not even thought of what Kuto Ball is going to be yet. Exciting, Gosh. exciting, Mad. Where are you? What are you up to? It's, it's still bright. Good segue because Joe kind of said Palace. there he was a. It was Palace, yeah. Joe was kind of saying that he felt things might have been feeling a bit easy, Joe. Um, I found this at Palace. So I, you might remember, I did a kind of a, I simmed until the end of December. Uh, Palace were second from bottom, so we took them over. Went on a bit of a spree in January. Uh, brought in Dewsbury Hall, brought in Kyle Walker Peters, brought in that Mohamed Diamande, different Diamande guy actually. Uh, we mentioned that Benjamin Rollheiser, Lucas Nemeka as an extra striker. Brought in about six or seven players. Um, I finished the season. I just want to talk to you about this, lads. You, and Dupe, I'll look at you for this one. You know I'm not the best at this game, usually. In the entire second half of the season, from the 1st of January until the end, I lost the opening game we played against Villa, 1-0 away, fine. I didn't lose again until April, where I lost back-to-back games, one against Tottenham in the league and one against Tottenham in the FA Cup semi-final. And they're the only three games I lost. And that doesn't feel right. And just for some additional kind of like what is going on. As we got to the last three or four games of the season, two of the last four games were away against Arsenal and Liverpool. We beat Arsenal 2-1, which is okay, fair enough. They, they weren't going great. And then I went and beat Liverpool 5-1 on the second last day of the season, second last game of the season. And they were like second, third in the league. And I, it just, it just doesn't feel right. And I had, I had one game where I played Brighton, and it was seven five, in the league. And I googled what's the highest scoring game in history, and it was seven four. Reading so, um, Arsenal. was that Reading Arsenal? Uh, it was. Oh, I actually looked at this, didn't I? You, you might be right. I feel like Portsmouth yeah. might have been in there, though. I, I need to go back and check. So, I- a little bit of alarm bells. Um, like I had, I brought in some good players. I sold a lot. Brought in some decent players. 
the likes of Eze and Elise are very good in this game. Odson Edward was banging as well. But for me, nah, I mean, I ended up finishing ninth from 19th. And there's a whole bunch of green on the screen here on that schedule. And I it just didn't feel right. So that made me hesitate to start the Ike save. And I'm glad I've not. I just hope it doesn't feel too easy going forward. Two things. One, I'm assuming this was offline and not on stream. It always is, too. <laughs> Number two, you need to stop spending time with Dave. That Dave and saving and reloading, clearly working well yeah. for you. I wish, like, I mean, I would like for that to be the explanation here because some of these results just felt, it just felt, it just felt too easy and it shouldn't, What's right? What system are playing? So I've got a 4-2-3-1 with uh, DMs. Um, nothing spe spectacular roles wise like i've got a let me just open the last so the last game i played sorry i'm right it wasn't a 4231 that's milan 4 433 basically um i've got tyreek mitchell as a wing there back on the left we've got edward edward as the lone striker eze as an inside forward left alize as an inside wi uh, inverted winger on the right i remember you remember last week i talked to you about the double mazalas that probably is the standout for me because for Diamande, who's this is a Mohamed Diamande signed from Norgeland. He got eight goals and six assists in fifteen Premier League appearances. I've, for I've seen, a Hall. Lot of, seen a lot of people pick him up in, really in okay. early access. Yeah, mm. Dewsbury Hall had five goals and three assists for fifteen uh, league appearances. They weren't all starts, but you, you kind of get the drift. I, I I don't know I don't know what it is like. I mean, Olizzi had nine goals. Eze had. Seven and Edward at twenty one. I think that's all competitions. I'm just looking at the the overall screen. But I I don't like that it felt a little bit easy. But then again, I came into a January transfer window, probably spent about hundred million, sold about fifty, and maybe that's just what happens. I don't know. So yeah, let's see. But obviously, going to the Ike save starting today as the pod is out, it's going to be different. It's going to be harder. But a lot of that will be to do with me self navigating the difficulty in terms of how i'm going to approach the save and obviously focusing as much as we can on swedish players and that so i'm really i'm really looking forward to that save and dupe you remember we spoke about that new kit it arrived today on the day of recording and it's lovely. any good any good any good it's very nice in the wash um got to get it ready for next week so uh okay uh, I'll, I'll send you you a i actually tweeted out i tweeted out a picture Have yeah, a it looks nice man can I, can, can you, I haven't got, I, I don't, I don't even follow you actually. Um, could you uh, <laughs> send us a link? <laughs> can you unmute and unblock me, please? <laughs> I don't know if block just got, I just got, it, yeah. 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 So it, could you send me the link to purchase one? Because they look lovely. I will, yeah. It's a, the 132 year anniversary kit that they brought out uh, kind of at the beginning of the year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice one. So, it is yes, nice. that's Alice and that's Ike. I really want one because when I play football, we have to play in a white shirt and that looks sick. So uh, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Please. I'll get the link. Uh, so that'd be really good. Um, awesome. Okay. I, look, I'll be honest with you. I think, listen to you, that Palace team is a bit of a sleeper team on Football Manager, in my opinion. So they, some of the talent they've got in there, like you've mentioned about Elise and you've mentioned about Eze. There is some really good players there. Um, some of those results are a bit weird. This is where get me Dave is going to chime in and say they got relegated in his favor. Yeah, I think it's rock bottom on one. Like yeah. dreadful. <laughs> But then they've Strange all gone. One, yeah. Why did I not go for anyone in the end? Because I was literally talking about Izzo the whole time. I can't even remember. Because yeah. you was getting a hard on over Messi, mate. Messi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I so think yeah, Dave, Eze Dave... was like 25 tops release clause. Um, yeah. Mark Gay was cheap. about 40 million. So if you had the money then. I'm pretty sure, Dave, you were talking mm. about the fact that you were trying to offer Messi a deal. And I think I, I think I paused it to have a look at the, the contract you're offering him. At one stage, if he scored and assisted in a game, he was getting like crazy <laughs> amount of money. You're like, I saw it. We're going to sell shirts. Who the fuck's going to buy a Messi shirt? Or Wolf, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Wolves Messi Ooh, shirt? You're going like, to sell 600 grand worth of shirts every week. <laughs> yeah, like I think it was about, he was getting about 950 grand a week if he like would have played at Wolves. Yeah, well, so, no it. wonder he was so happy to accept it. Um, Dortmund, I've played a little bit um, and I haven't played much. I've played six games so far. Um, I'll be honest, we are playing on and people at home is going to hate this. We're playing on 90 minutes. So I'm watching four matches. So when I, I am only getting a game or two away in a, in a, in a day, but Armada, uh, Thiago Armada is still absolutely killing it. He is a uh, top goal scorer for me, uh, top assist maker for me. Um, and that front four uh, is beautifully balanced uh, the way that it's playing. 
Um, and I'll be honest, I think that's probably the last we're going to see of Dortmund. Um, I'm probably just going to go and hit the Manchester United save uh, early uh, whilst it's fresh on my mind. I have a way I want to play with them. Um, I've got my, my ideas. I've got it drawn up. So maybe uh, next time we'll hear that because I won't be starting my main save until I wait for a database to be built and a man cave to be built. So uh, we've got a little way from there. So yeah, not a huge amount to update you with on the Dortmund save. And it's probably a bit of a waste of time, seeing as that's probably the only time. It's not going to see the light of day anymore. You couldn't pick, I probably couldn't pick a better time to, to start with United though, Duke. Like I would say, you know, it's 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 ideal timing to, to do a United save. I know you do one nearly every year, but now... Uh, I kind of get one in every year because we are, we go through the cycle. So, we're not normally this bad this early. It's normally kind of a little bit later in the year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we shall see. I will just keep, I will probably just sim to 6th of November because I probably won't start it till Monday. So I'll probably sim to the 6th of November um, and hope that they've been crap in game and take over from then and go from there. Uh, so the transfers will be the transfers uh, and then I will go from there. But, that would be about it, really. And uh, we need a centre-back, maybe a young, talented centre-back. And talking of young, talented centre-backs, that nice. nicely brings us on nice. to Adventures in Wonder Kid Land. This week's Adventure in Wonder Kid Land takes us to France and yet another centre-back. Six foot three, jumping reach of 15, heading 15, tackling 13, marking 12. It's Lenny Yoro. The perfect start for a 17-year-old centre-back with years ahead of him. We've chosen him today due to his real-life form. Nine games, one goal, 64 passes per 90, 90% pass accuracy, 1.7 tackles per 90, 1.5 interceptions per 90, 4.2 clearances per 90, 68% of, uh, percent of aerial duels won, and 69 nice percent of aerial duels Giggity. of all duels won. So... What do we think, guys? He's First and foremost, he's seventeen, isn't he? He's seventeen. He's seventeen. Mum's yeah. buying his trousers. Yeah. Is his first team? <laughs> first team numbers. Yeah. First team numbers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crikey. He looks. He looks good. Like I think we sort of said before we kicked off today. I'd never. I hadn't heard of him or, or or seen him on FM. But his attributes are like, mate. If you give this kid game time, or even if you play him in your twenty ones, or give him a loan move out, you will make. Well, saying that. I think he uh, he has probably got a variable PA on this because I think Joe, you loaded up a save and he had one of value, which was quite expensive. And Mad, you loaded up a save and his value was a little mm. bit lower. So I think it depends, but he looks a really top defender and definitely want to to keep your eye on. I think within two or three years into the game, I think he genuinely could be a very, very good defender. One thing that we haven't mentioned is that determination uh, on both screenshots that we're looking at here, 16. Um, and that is huge with the attribute set that he has got. Um, he is a very good centre back. He's Looks one nice, that I he? wear. Yeah, absolutely. Again, right, right footed centre back though. So pair yeah, him up with quite, the left footer last yeah. week. Yeah, him and Isaac Torre, nice. lovely. Yeah, <laughs> you can have like Len Len thirteen foot of men. That's brilliant. Mm. Lenny is yeah six foot three. Yeah, and I I was looking out there on the attributes so like. Or on the screen, maybe this is because of his age. He doesn't have a specific preferred role. Wide centre back is at the top, and that's where I actually had a quick look to see are, are Lille currently playing a three at the back or four at the back? They're playing with uh, two centre halves, basically four at the back. Um, so I would imagine he he's probably going to be like you could have him in any defensive role, really. But it's interesting; it has wide centre back at the top of the list. I don't know what's behind that. To to be perfectly honest, as well. Um with that passing te uh, technique and vision all being above 10 at that age, he's got, he's good with the ball at his feet as well. So he's going to be able to play out of trouble nicely as well. Um, France is, is so stacked, isn't they? It's yeah, crazy. Which it's is really nice to see. He could play but DM it's, it's very so nicely as well. But France is so stacked for centre-halves that I think it was the last Spain international game, IRL, their centre-back pair were French. It was Emery, Emeric Laporte and Robin Lenormand. Robin Lenormand, is that his name? I am. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> like, so basically the, the Spanish centre-backs are French. That's where we are. That's the world we live in now. 
to be so, fair, yeah, so. looking at looking at the England team, I'll take some French centre backs, to be honest. We uh <laughs> we need some. Uh but yeah, mm. very, very good. Very good. Sign him up. Sign him up, definitely. When you look at other defenders in his age or age with similar attributes, you're talking about players like Antonio Silva, Scalvini, Debas, uh, who are definitely more rounded, ready players, but uh, for their age, but you can nurture him, and he's certainly one for the future. Uh, talking about our future boy, Dave, it's quiz time, baby. Gosh, right. So we're sticking with a similar theme to last week oh, in terms fuck. of career paths, but this week I've done it on players based on the teams that we have managed so far. This FM or potentially will manage in in Mad's case. So, oh god, <laughs> for Joe, I've got players. Obviously, where everyone's jumping in. But Joe, there are players that have played for Family Cow. Dupe, there are players that have played for Dortmund. And Mad, uh, obviously there are some ex Wolves players in there. But for Mad, there's not many half decent. What, what's your team? AIK players. So <laughs> just, players just players that have played in Sweden. All right. So, fine, uh, fine. We'll yeah. take that. Should have Standard done, rules. Should have English players that have played for Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> We've enough talk about Declan Rice in this podcast, mm. my friends. So we'll just. Um, We'll jump in number one. Normal rules, shout your name out, um, and then you get it. So uh so they could come in any or in any order, like what the first player could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, order. Just, just a random order. So the first player is uh started his professional career at Malmo. Also included a loan to IFK Malmo. Then moved to Torino, which included a loan move to Leeds United. Then moved to Leeds United on a permanent deal. Then moved to Brentford. Oh, uh, sent her off. Yeah, and now uh, he's back in Malmo. Uh, what's his name? Do you, you say your name? No, I'm trying to say the guy's name. But I can't. Oh, mate, I can see him. I think I have him. Like. Good quiz, Dave. Mate, it no, it is. And I can see I, yeah. I know, I know no, 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 I wasn't being sarcastic because I genuinely... No, this honestly, is... Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. I always thought he was a decent player, to be fair. Obviously, he's he obviously Swedish, him. right? He's a bit of a shit yeah. house. Centre off, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. Centre off. A bit of a shit house. Got a weird Leeds accent as well. So when... Uh, in, this was... Remember when... Give, give me L- his initials, Dave, and I'll get in. PJ. What does he answer? Yeah, yeah. That's him. Yeah. 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 Who gets the point for Not that? The PJ. Mad, <laughs> mad, uh, mad, mad, mad. I'm okay. pretty sure if you listen to my audio, I'm going, yeah, it's, uh, oh, I yeah, bottled sure. it. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Started his senior career at Borussia Dortmund. Easy. Then moved to Chelsea, which included his first year at Chelsea, actually back on loan at Dortmund. And now he plays for AC Milan. Joe. Joe. Pulisic. Oh, yeah. oh, of course. Shout. You look at his uh, youth career. He actually had a youth uh, stint at Brackley Town. Really? Um, oh. Yeah. Um, next one. Started his senior career at Porto B. Then moved to Porto. Then moved to Wolves on loan. Mad. Oh, at Porto. Mad? Uh, Gonsalves, no? Pedro? No, no. So Porto is on loan at Wolves during his time at Porto, and now he plays for PSG. Oh, I'm mad. Okay, mm-hmm. Maybe I can show it again. Yeah, go on, mate. Go on, mate. No, go I, on, I've already got into it. Is that a... No, no I have a go, go mate. Uh, Vitinha, no? Vitinha, correct, yeah. Vitinha. Player that Wolves had an option to buy and decided not to use it. Shocking. Mm. Next one. Started his senior career at Wolves. Then moved to Family Cow. And now plays for Sporting. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pedro Gonçalves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, man. Gee. Crazy one career. Got, one the crazy, away. crazy youth players as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next one. Started his career at Sparta Prague. Then moved to Lokeren. Then moved to Anderlecht. 
Then he played for Borussia Dortmund. Doop? Doop? No. I was going to say Duranville, but no. no. He's got from. That's not no. right at all. Then he's to Sparta Monaco. Prague. Oh, so from um... Dortmund to Monaco. Ah. Then he moved to FC Nuremberg. Oh, that's a spanner. And a couple of random teams to finish off, off his career. He moved to Krylia Sobitov Samara. And this then ended his. Us. And then ended his career at Cannes. Can he? Sparta Prague to where? Lockeren. And then to Lockeren to Anderlecht. To Anderlecht. And then Anderlecht to Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund is where he played his most games. And to give you a clue where he scored his most goals. And then Monaco after Dortmund. Mm -hmm. We're talking more to late 90s, 2000s for this one. Mm, I'm just trying to think which fucking name is. This is what happens when you record a pod at quarter to 11 at night. <laughs> yeah, My brain is fucking working. hanging. Dortmund, I don't know. Monaco, Dortmund. Striker, obviously. Yeah. Is he Czech? Yeah. Is he from Czech? Because he's Sparta Prague. Yeah. I think that gives it right. Yeah, he's Jan Collar. Yeah. Yeah. Big man. Oh, the Six big man. No, Jan Collar. Raz is screaming at his fucking yeah. radio right now. <laughs> Punching Kinsey as he goes along. <laughs> <laughs> and he's freezing he the dogs. Have a radio. <laughs> oh. He has a wireless mate. That's how normal he is. <laughs> Next one. Um, started his career at Malmo again. Oh. Then moved to Ajax. Slatan, Joe. Slatan Ibrahimovic. Slatan Ibrahimovic. Oh. Yes. Do you know what's <laughs> worse is when he, when he when he did question one and he said Malmo, Zlatan came straight into yeah. my mind. I thought, I thought it was too easy. I was like. Did you no see one. his record at PSG, by the way? Apparently, 113 league goals in 122 games. Mm. That's ridiculous. You want to see Cavani's at PSG as well. His is decent. Mm. Right, next one. This one be interesting. See how quick you get this one. Um, started his career at Porto B and then played uh, quite a lot of games for Porto. During that time, he had loans at Florence, Gomares, and AEK Athens. Then moved on a permanent deal to Zenit St. Petersburg. Then moved to Fenerbahce. Then to, is it Cagliari? Cag Cagliari? I don't know how you actually pronounce mm. it. You know what I mean. Welcome to my world. Then he moved to Rangers. Then he played for Parma. He then moved to Family Cow, but didn't play a game in the league. And then he ended his career at Apollon Simernis. And he's currently a sporting director at AEK Athens. I think the big clue there is when he moved to Rangers for a year. Hmm. Centre back. Portuguese. Portuguese centre back at Rangers. I think this is a weird one because he actually played nearly 100 times for Portugal, but I don't think you would class him as a notable Portuguese player, which is as mad as it sounds. With, with 100 caps? Yeah, which is which is crazy. But he moved to Zenit when they started getting that little bit of money in, you know, early 2010s. So who played alongside Pepe for Portugal during that era? Because Pepe would have been, been there. Him, yeah, it would have been this guy. Uh, Who the hell was playing alongside Pepe before, like Jose Font or someone? Joe, go on. Shit. <laughs> Bruno Alves. It is Bruno oh, Alves. Oh, yeah, ninety-six games. Been, I didn't you know what? I was fuck. I was going. I was trying to think because when I was doing the Kuto for for Melica, for Melica, I was mm. looking at players and I was trying to. I was like, I, I knew there was another defender. Yeah. When you said he'd played like a hundred times for Portugal, I was like, yeah. He's an un he's like an unknown known player. Well, to be fair, I've just read he joined Family Cow and then two weeks later he cancelled his contract because <laughs> he fell out <laughs> with the manager. Uh, next one. This is another Swedish base one. He started his career at Nas Vikings IK. Oh them. Then moved to GIF Sundsvall. Then to IFK Norrköping. Then he moved to Parma. Then he moved permanently to Leeds United. Joe. Joe. Thomas Brolin. 
It is Thomas Brolin, oh, yes. Thomas. Big Thomas Brolin. Yeah. He, he, he was a bit of a meme, wasn't he? But he's, his record ain't ain't too bad. He was a he was a baller. He just got the piss taken out of him because he put a bit of weight on. Yeah. Basically, basically yeah. After Euro 96, George, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, my time. Penultimate one. Started senior career at Radcliffe Borough, which included a loan to Clipstone. Then he moved to Rochdale on a permanent deal. Then he joined West Bromwich Albion, uh, which included a loan back to Rochdale and a loan at Bolton Wanderers. He then moved to Watford on a permanent deal. Then to West Ham United on loan. Then joined West Ham United on a permanent deal. Mad. Mad. Craig Dawson. It is Craig Dawson. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Obviously ended his career at Wolves as well. Ballon Dawson. Ballon Dawson. I was like, when is Dortmund going to come into this one? <laughs> yeah. And the final one. This one surprised me, actually. Some of the teams on here. So kicked off his senior career at AC Milan, uh, which included loans at Dijon, Lille and Monaco. Then he moved to San Etienne on a permanent deal. Then he moved to Borussia Dortmund. Then he moved to Arsenal. Uh, he then moved to Barcelona on a permanent deal. Then moved to Chelsea. Dupe. Dupe. I want to say Cesc Fabregas, but... No, it's not Cesc Fabregas. What? And then he now oh, plays... Some... Arsenal, Barca, Chelsea. That's what's... And then he now plays in Marseille on a permanent deal. Oh, oh, go on, Deep, if you know it. Mad. No, no. Mad. Oh, Bamiyang. Yeah, it's Pierre Emerick Bamiyang. Yeah. Oh, Probably yeah, kicked off his that. senior career at AC Milan, believe it or not. Yeah, I didn't know that. I got yeah. oh, fucking blacked out. Did you get one, Deep? Me. No, I never get one of them. Oh, I, that's, uh, I'm terrible at those. So, Mad, you got a Bamiyang, Dawson. I think uh, Joe won just. I don't know. Oh, you I got don't know. Mad was that? Yeah, Mad got off, yeah. Oh, he did get off, yeah. So, Mad got Pontus. Oh, Joe got Pulisic, right? Mad got. Did you get Vitinha, Joe? No, that was mad. 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 You get Pedro, though. You got Gonzalez, yeah. Jan Collar, yeah. you got Joe. Zlatan, you got that one. Mate. Joe. Bruno Alves, you got. Bro, now nah, you've yeah, won it, Joe. Joe. I think you're 6 4. Yeah, six four, Give it to Joe. Joe deserves it. Joe. Joe. GG's. Joe deserves GG's. it for the Bruno Alves. Show the loads. That, nah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That, to be well, fair, that's, that was a research chat, so I can't. That run off the top You're of the Brolin. Brolin was there, mate. You need to bring him a bit uh, a bit uh, closer to the time, Dave. You remember when you sat there and you go, oh, it's a bit before my time. There you go. Yeah. Sorry, I was just Thank trying to think of like niche, no, but kind of... No, cool no, it's good. 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 It shows you put a bit of effort in. Good Tricky work. Tricky ones are good. Uh, yeah. And like mad. That brings episode 325 to a close. You can find the links for each of us in the podcast description or by visiting fivestarpotential.com where you can find our latest FM24 content, including part two of Mad's FM24 Youth Academy Challenge and also this very podcast in video form. Five Star Potential is available on iTunes, Spotify, and most of our popular podcast apps and platforms for a new podcast released every single week. Thank you all for listening. There'll be more from us next week. Say goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks. Adios. Enjoy playing the game.